Are you guys ready to learn about the best molds on the market for wood and resin applications? Well, I've got news for you, they do not exist. There is no such thing as the best molds. Now let's get it kind of sound strange coming from someone who works at a mold company. Craft Elements, of course, makes large torrent silicone molds as well as a line of HDP molds. But I will be the first to admit that our molds are not the best in every application. They are the best for some applications, um, but in many cases, there's competitors molds or even handmade made molds that are going to be a better option. So to really drill on this point of there's being no such thing as the best, which people who are not marketers typically use because it, it seems like what their customers might want to hear, um, let's use an analogy. If you're a mom and you've got three kids or four kids, let's say, what is the best car for you? Is it a Ferrari? I mean, Ferrari has some really nice cars, but are they the best cars? Well, no, because if you're a mom with three or four kids, you're gonna be leaving two or three of those kids at home if you wanna drive their Ferrari. Probably not so good for grocery shopping or other things that moms are typically doing during the day. So really, for a mom, a Ferrari's not the best, but if you're a single dude, maybe you're living in LA or Vegas and you wanna you know, find a, find a girlfriend, maybe the Ferrari is perfect for you. It is the best car. So again, this is really a case of, and really an analogy for what I wanna talk about today, that there are some molds that are great and the best, if you wanna use that term, for for certain applications, others not so much. So we're gonna look at the five main types of molds today, uh, or forms, and we're gonna talk about their advantages and disadvantages. And at the very end of this video, we'll let you decide uh, what's gonna be the best for you. And if it's not our molds, that's okay. So let's get right into it, and we'll look at all the different types of molds that are available to you as a maker, woodworker, or resin artist. All right, so we're gonna go old school for a bit. Um, when resin work and river tables and things like that were kind of just getting popular, this was really the only option. This is a wooden tuck tape box or form, if you will, but essentially it is plywood that has been cut. Uh, there's a base, it's a five piece uh, box, obviously there's a base and then four sides. And then that plywood form is covered in something called tuck tape or sheathing tape, uh, which is a tape that they would be using for um, plastic over walls, um, you know, between installations, like if you're doing your basement or a house or whatever, the plastic sheathing that goes up, that's the tape that this is for. And it's great because resin doesn't stick to it. So this was kind of the original mold box. So, you know, pre 2018, this is probably what you'll be using. And there are many people that still use these. So let's talk about the advantages of this because there actually are some advantages. One, it is very cheap. You can easily get plywood, it doesn't have to be awesome plywood, it could even be melamine or MDF. You can get that, cut it to size, and then cover it with tuck tape and have, you know, a 10, 15, 20 dollar form. The best thing about this type of design is that it's flexible. If you are only doing custom stuff and your customer's coming to you and saying, I want this size by this size, this length, width, height, or whatever, uh, a mold may not be working for you or ideal for your in your case because there's only certain molds on the market in certain sizes. You can't just get any size you want and go and find a mold for it. You really have to make your own. But I honestly think that's where the advantages stop. Cost is good, an advantage, and flexibility in terms of size, advantages. However, let's talk about the very obvious disadvantages. With these molds, um, and the reason that the rest of these molds came along is because, um, well, they're a pain in the butt, right? You have to make them, which is not ideal. Um, you've got to put them together. And they obviously are not reusable a certain amount of times. If you put it together properly, if you're using screws or adjustable fittings, you could probably get two or three uses out of this. But in most cases, you're nailing it together using a brad nail or whatever. It's a one and done application. You've poured your board, you've poured your table, you're gonna rip the sides off and toss them, right? So it is not really a reusable solution. Second most obvious disadvantage is that they leak. Uh, this is not a sealed item. It's not one piece. It's five pieces that have all been put together. Now, if you build it correctly, you're going to uh, use silicone or caulking in the edges and corners. And just as a side note, at the end of this video, I'm going to actually going to show you how I put this thing together really quickly. So if you want to actually learn how to put one of these together, uh, you can finish watching this video, then go to the very end or wait till the very end, and you will see how we put this together. Um, but what I'm getting at is that these need sealed. So every single time you use it, you've got to use your silicone or caulking, go around the edges and corners, otherwise it's going to leak. And especially if you're using a deep pour resin, which is almost like water thin, it's going to get out. If you've got one little void there, you're going to, you're going to you know, pour this in the afternoon, come back in the shop in the morning, and you're going to have resin everywhere. It's going to be a nightmare to clean up. It's going to be wasted money, wasted time, a whole lot of waste. 
So, stepping it up a little bit, uh, going from the put together uh, wood and tuck tape box, this is a very similar idea, except it is HDPE. HDP stands for High Density Polyethylene. There's also LDP, which is low density. There's UHMWP, which is Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. So either way, these polyethylene molds are great because once they are, um, once the resin hardens, it's really easy to take it off because the resin doesn't stick to this material. Um, there are some clear advantages. One, uh, at least compared to the tuck, wooden tuck tape box, even though it has to be cut and built, you can also get them pre-assembled, by the way. Um, once it actually is cut and built, it is reusable many, many times. This is, um, you know, this is something I built, I think, four or five years ago at this point. You'll notice that there's a, an inset piece. Ignore that. Typically, this is just a, 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 a resin or rather a, a HTP box. Now, the other cool thing, as I mentioned, is that when they built these ones, in this case, they actually have uh, hex screws and um, threaded bolts inside here, which makes the sides easy to come on and off. But that also alludes to the disadvantages is that you physically have to put this together and take it apart every time. So um, with that being said, like the wooden tuck tape mold that we just talked about, it can leak. It is not a one piece form. So that means that there's really no sealing between the corners and edges. So just like that wooden tuck tape mold, if it isn't sealed, uh, with caulking or silicone or whatever, um, it's going to leak and you're going to have a disaster. But it is definitely a step up in terms of comparing it to the wooden tuck tape forms. Now, I do not have one here, but there is a couple of companies um, online as well. Not one of us. We do not make these. Um, but there are a couple of companies online that will that have these pre-made and they even got a little upgrade. So they've got channels in the edges, which actually accommodate um, clamps and hold downs. They've got built in silicone gaskets. So even though you do have to take it apart and reassemble it, it, it won't leak because there's a silicone gasket there. Um, but the other disadvantage cost. Uh, these uh, HDP plastic is quite expensive, especially during and post pandemic when supply chain is out of control. Um, I think the last quote I got on a three quarter inch piece of four by eight HDP plastic was close to 500 Canadian dollars, so like 400 US dollars. So making these is, is definitely not cheap. It's a significant investment. And especially if you're buying a pre-made one, you know, they're paying those costs for the sheet, but then they're processing it. So they're using the CNC or cutting them by hand. They're inserting all the threaded inserts, the bolts, the nuts, and the, and the fittings and whatever else would come with that. So it is not a cheap solution, but it definitely is reusable. You'll get a nice straight pull out of that, meaning that the sides and the edges are straight, unlike the next series of molds we're going to talk about. Um, so yeah, it is, it's definitely a viable option if you're making uh, larger pieces, larger tables. You can build your own or you could buy one pre-made. Um, so there's some disadvantages and advantages, again, just like any of these other molds. But right now I want to move on to something else and talk about the formed HDP molds. All right, so just like this mold, there are formed HDP molds on the market. The first one I want to talk about is the welded type. So these, this is not a mold we sell. This is one of our competitors' molds. Um, but I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of it because, again, this video is looking at you know molds not just from us but kind of a broad option to give you and make you really educated about what's out there. So this is a welded HTP mold. Uh, also, they also call it a no seal mold. Um, basically, it is just like some of these other molds where it's a five piece design. You got your walls and your bottom, but instead of having to take it apart every time, the thing has been completely welded with plastic welding. So it's, it's, it's very much like uh, aluminum or metal welding, but it's using plastic instead of metal. So it is a, effectively a one piece mold now. Um, the ad other advantage to this is cost. They are cheaper than the uh, thicker um, pre-assembled HDP molds. That they do have larger sizes. So because of that cost, you can get tabletop sizes. I think this is a 36 by 18, but you can get them in 48 by 24, like in like maybe even five by, uh, four by eight. So they do have large sizes of them. They are attainable and manufacturable because they are relatively inexpensive to make. They do not re require any tooling. Uh, tooling as far as manufacturing is the, the master form to make things like silicone molds or the one piece HDP molds. Um, so there's not really a lot of upfront cost in making a custom size. They could be made basically in any size you want. Well, let's talk about disadvantages. So right off the bat, you probably should see that the sides are not straight. They are actually flared or tapered out. Um, and the reason for that is because it's very thick material. Um, it's 3 8 thick. It's not very flexible like a silicone mold would be, for example. Um, so 
uh, in order to be able to get your material or your finished piece out of this mold, it has to be flared. So it's going to, you know, when you turn this thing over and you hammer it uh, with your mallet or hammer, the piece is going to come out. If it was straight up, there'd just be way too much tension and you would be fighting to get that piece out. But with that said, that tapered design is a notable disadvantage because one, you're wasting a lot of epoxy. When you're putting your wood in there, your wood's not tapered or flared, right? Your wood's probably straight. So um, you end up with a lot of epoxy wasted around the sides. And of course, when you do get it out of the mold, you have to then trim the entire perimeter. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a piece with sides like this. So. That's a clear disadvantage, um, is that you have a lot of post-processing to do, there's resin wasted. But if you're using this with wood and resin, is it really that big of a deal? Probably not, because realistically, you're gonna trim your perimeter, plane the piece, you know, and do a lot of post-processing of that piece anyway. But if you were a resin artist, for example, someone who just wanted to pour a big uh, resin casting and have a nice finished product right out of the mold, like you would expect with a silicone mold, this is not the mold for you. This is not, you're not gonna be happy with this because you're gonna end up with uh, weird funky sides um, and edges because these, weld, these welds, hard to see, but these welds are actually just like, you know, a silicone uh, caulking bead. They are, you can physically feel them. They're not smooth, they're a little bit rough and they're, they're a little bit of a curve on there. That's gonna come out in your resin. So no matter what, if you take something out of here, whether it's solid resin or wooden resin, you've gotta trim the perimeter, you've probably gotta plane it, um, that's the obvious disadvantage here. Now, another disadvantage of these is, of course, their lifetime. They do have a limited lifespan, and mostly it's because of the beating they take trying to get the piece out of this thing. And I've had many, many customers who want to buy one of these things, and they, they broke it after five uses, or maybe even 10 uses. Basically, what it involves is once you put your wood and resin, or just your resin in there, to get it out, you really need to beat the snot out of it with a mallet, and eventually these welds can crack, uh, or, or gap, or whatever, right? So it's, it's, it's eventually going to fail, uh, whether it's in five uses, or 20 uses, or 30 uses, we're not sure, it depends on how you beat it, depends on how you treat it, um, but it will eventually fail. But again, it is a relatively low cost solution compared to say a, silico a comparable size silicone mold or the thicker um, material, the HDP pre-assembled mold. So it's definitely something to consider. You know, you wanna look at the goods and the bads and decide if it's right for you. Now, I wanna talk about a very similar mold to this, which is actual true one piece formed HDP molds. All right, so the next type of form or mold we're gonna talk about are the formed uh, one piece uh, HDP mold. So like the mold I just talked about, um, it is still HDP, which is high density polyethylene. This mold and this mold are actually a couple of our competitors molds. And I'm certainly not knocking them because we actually do have similar molds to these as well. These are our HDP forms and they are extremely similar. They are a one piece design. In this case, our piece, our, uh, our molds are rotational molded, which means they have master tooling, a big aluminum block essentially that's shaped like the inside of the mold. They are heated up uh, little beads of HDP formed over that or rolled in this big machine and that's how you get this tray design. Uh, these particular molds are vacuum formed. So in this case, they take uh, a thin piece of HDP and this big machine, it heats up the, it heats up the sheet. You have a master tool or uh, your, your metal low aluminum tooling and then it sucks it down with a vacuum and forms it, okay? So you have a actual true one piece, uh, not welded HDP mold. So let's talk about the advantages. The main advantage to these guys are cost. They're relatively inexpensive to manufacture. Once the tooling is made, uh, we can run 100, 200, 500 of them at a time, and the per unit cost is, is relatively low compared to doing, say, silicone molds one by one. They come in large sizes. There's, there's not necessarily a limit to how big they can be, but there is that initial tooling investment which will dictate the actual sizes available. So unlike the welded HDP molds that could be really made in any size because there's no initial tooling investment, there is a significant tooling investment for these. So for example, this 36 by 18 mold, I will tell you that our initial upfront cost just for the metal uh, cooled aluminum tooling was close to 10,000 US dollars. Now, an advantage of these guys over the welded designs is that they have relatively straight sides. And I say relatively because they, although they are at you know, a straight 90 degree angle, they're not really straight. And I, and I can show you that here. 
Um, the, the problem with um, forming polyethylene, HTP and other types of polyethylene, is that polyethylene naturally has like these internal stresses, these chemical stresses that are constantly pulling it. So even though it was formed on a nice heated form or, or even a cooled form, um, they end up warping, right? Whether it's, you know, one of our units or a competitor's unit, you can see that is far from a straight edge and the bottom is most definitely not straight either. Um, the same thing is going to go for our molds. Um, this is probably a nicer example and compared to that. It is relatively uh, straight, but it's still not perfect, right? You're still going to have gaps. Now, to really illustrate that, I want to walk over to the other side of the building here where we actually have a couple of pieces of wood in, in this exact mold, and you can see exactly what I mean. All right, so this is one of the, the exact 36 by 18 HDPE mold that I had over there. This is a form mold, and I want to just move the camera over here so you can see what I mean. So these sides are relatively straight, but the other disadvantage of these HDP molds and the way that they're formed is that the inner corners and bottoms have to have radiuses. They're not a perfect 90 degree cut, which means when you put your wood in, it's not gonna sit right on the edge. So you are still gonna have some waste. Here's a little bit more waste than usual. This is probably typically what you'd expect, maybe a, an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch. But essentially your wood is not going to butt up really, really nicely to the edge of these formed HDP molds. Whether you're looking at our mold or one of our competitors molds and that's important if you're really concerned about waste you're going to have to uh, take this out of the mold trim the perimeter plane it level it out so in the end you kind of have a similar job to that as you would with the tapered hdp molds but in the end with these guys you do waste less resin you're still wasting resin around the perimeter but you do waste less of it compared to those those large draft angles um, the one other thing to mention is if you wanted to avoid that with these molds, you could actually pre-router the wood, especially if you are using wood. You can pre-router the wood with a quarter inch or three eighth inch round over bit. That way the corners of the wood will sit right closer to the mold walls and you won't waste as much resin. You'll end up with a bigger piece that doesn't have to be trimmed as much. But they are still a great solution. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, especially compared to silicone molds. They are available in a couple of different sizes and they are pretty resilient. They're definitely not going to fall apart as easy as uh, a welded mold that when you bang the, when you come and flex this around and pull your piece out, it's still reusable. You can use this many, many times. You don't risk the welds cracking or breaking. So whether you buy, you know, one of our HDP molds or a formed mold from a competitor, um, they kind of have the same dynamic properties and the same advantages and disadvantages. I, this is actually a circular mold. and I want to really touch on this quickly because I'm not exactly sure, to be, <laughs> for lack of a better term, why there's circular versions of these. Um, as I did mention, you still have to trim the edge, right? Your wood is not going to sit uh, and let, you could, you can cut circular wood, of course, but with this edge, with this, um, with this uh, radius here, you're never going to get your wood to set perfectly around the edge here. You'd have to be a real pro to do that. So if you fill this up with wood and resin, you're going to have to trim it anyway. So having a preformed circular mold to me in an HDP thermoformed or vacuum formed design like this doesn't make a lot of sense because the whole idea of having a formed circular mold or oval mold or whatever is that you can take it out and you don't have to recut a circle or recut an oval but you effectively have to do that here with these you've got to finish that circle for lack of a better term and these do have a little bit of a draft angle on them i think it's like a one to three degree draft angle which means you still got a little bit of a taper so no matter what you have to if you're making a circle with this mold for example this is not one of our molds it's one of our competitors molds but if you're making a circle with this, this mold, you have quite a bit of finishing to do around that perimeter to actually make it a true 90 degree circle and, circle and to get rid of any excess resin. So just be aware of that if you're looking at one of these. Um, it's a little bit easier, of course, to trim and cut uh, the surface and the perimeter of a rectangular mold. Definitely not as easy to cut a perfect circle from uh, a pull out of one of these molds. All right, so that's basically covering the HDP formed molds. Now I wanna move on to our silicone mold line and talk about silicone molds in depth, advantages and disadvantages. Let's go. So let's get to the bread and butter of this. It's uh, silicone molds. Now Craft Elements is a silicone mold company 
first and foremost, we do have a couple of different product lines. We, of course, sell HDP molds, and we have our acrylic router templates. We have a couple of different uh, efficient, high-efficiency tools in the works for makers, but we're really known for our silicone molds. But as I've indicated previously in this video, um, some of our competitors' molds and some of our other types of molds are better for certain applications. So I really want to delve into silicone molds and talk about their advantages, their disadvantages, and give you some examples of some of the really cool things that we can do and that we have done with our silicone molds. But first, I want to go out on a little bit of a side rant because, you know, we came out with these molds specifically for woodworkers and resin artists for making charcuterie boards, for example, uh, back in mid-2019. We were the very first company to have a charcuterie board or table mold that's true, one piece, no seal, no leaking design. Even before our competitors registered their websites, we were making one piece silicone molds. However, silicone molds are expensive. And some people are like, what do you mean silicone molds are expensive? I can get, you know, mold, silicone molds on Amazon for five bucks. Well, let's compare that five or $10, you know, Chinese made silicone mold for like a trinket to something like this, right? They're both silicone, just like, you know, a, a one ounce of resin is not a gallon of resin, right? That's really the comparison we're making here. So it kind of blows my mind when people are like, wow, your molds are so expensive. Well, yeah, because look at the size of them. They're, they're not a, you know, a trinket mold. They're not, this thing weighs like, you know, four ounces or something, and this thing weighs like seven pounds, right? So if you're looking at it from a cost perspective, if you're looking at just purely on weight, this should probably be 70 to 80 times what this is worth, but it's not, right? So these silicone molds are very, very thick. They're very, very durable, and we make them that way for a reason. We want you to be able to make really big things with them. We want you to be able to use wood in them. We want you to be able to use resin in them, and that's really where the advantage of these molds comes in compared to something like this. All right, well, let's get into the advantages of silicone molds. I've pulled out a bunch of our molds here. This is by no means all of them. We, in fact, we have 60 or 70 different shapes and designs at this point. So if you want to check them all out, you can do so at craftedelements.com right now. Otherwise, let's go through some of the advantages of silicone molds. The primary advantage and the one that people are going to talk about the most is the easy, uh, ease of use. They are really easy to set up really easy to demold. And what I mean by that is you don't have to assemble them. You don't, gotta, you don't have to screw them together. You don't have to seal them. They are what they are. This is, uh, for example, one of our uh, circular or cylindrical molds. You don't need to worry about anything other than spring your mold release and then putting your resin in uh, or your resin in wood if you're, if you're using a resin in wood project. Um, you, they come in a huge variety of sizes and, and styles. So this is, you know, a, a Texas state mold. It is one inch deep in the shape of Texas, and you can see it's got intricate details along the sides. All of our silicone molds, and just like most silicone molds, molds in the market, are a true 90 degree angle and they're flat, okay? So unlike the HDP molds where you're gonna have kind of an inner radius um, or maybe an in, improper wall, you're gonna be able to put a piece right into one of these molds and get a nice straight edge and flat bottom, assuming you have a flat table, um, right out of that demolding process. You're not gonna have to go and trim the perimeter to get a straight edge. You're gonna have a straight edge and a clean edge uh, using one of these molds. Uh, next thing is taking them out of the mold. You know, once you've put your resin and wood in there, um, if you're using one of the other molds, like an HDP mold, you either got to take the mold apart and then like pry that piece out, or you've got to, you know, take your hammer or mallet around your mold and kind of bend the mold and get that piece out. This is a silicone mold. That's it. This is the first time I, I literally poured this a couple of days ago, and that was me demolding it. It takes no effort. You end up, you end up with a super clean mold, and you end up with barely any, wa any waste, right? So you have a nice straight edge there. Um, and you're ready to take this into post-processing, or if you're just using um, resin, you're basically, you have a finished piece right out the gate. You can take that, you know, if you wanted to shave down your meniscus, which is that little, uh, little sharp edge here, you could do that, but you basically have a piece that's ready to use or sell right out of the mold. That's definitely not the case with an HDP mold or a wooden tuck tape mold. Um, here's an example of one. This is a 16 by 12 by two inch. This is a, a mold that's perfect for uh, big charcuterie boards, um, or rather not, not big charcuterie boards, but charcuterie boards in general. It is a popular size at 16 by 12. Um, if you're a resin artist and you want to make, you know, a geode, 
This is a really big geode mold. It's a rectangular geode. It's one inch deep. Uh, so you can make some, like actually you could make a legitimate geode tabletop with this because you could go up to one inch of resin. We have a variety of cross molds uh, and other different shapes like wine caddies and other functional art. And again, you can use wood or wood and resin in these molds. Sorry, you can use wood and resin or just resin in these molds. You can pre-cut the wood to match these molds. And I want to actually talk about that because we have a complete line of router templates that match our more awkwardly shaped molds. Let's look at those just really quickly there. So this is our fishtail charcuterie board mold. It is designed to make, obviously, charcuterie boards or sharing boards. It's got a built-in handle. However, what if you wanted to actually put wood in this? Well, I mean, if it's, if it's a straight piece, you could put it here. But what if you actually wanted to put a piece of wood here and actually form it? Well, we have these. We've got uh, templates made for the vast majority of our odd-shaped molds like this. So you can actually use this template, use a router table, to pre-cut wood and shape that wood to fit right into this mold. So really, you know, we're not just offering a mold, we're offering a system where you could, if you're, especially if you're working with wood and resin, you're going to be able to pre-cut wood to perfectly fit in here. And that's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of post-processing, a lot of shaping effort, and a lot of kind of weird looking gaps if you were just trying to freehand that wood, which is where these templates come in really handy. And, and like I said, most of these uh, molds that we have do have a matching template. So you can go to craftedelements.com and actually match them up from there. All right. So... They're easy to set up, they're easy to demold, they come in a huge variety of shapes and you know sizes and stuff, and even pre-made shapes that are gonna save you from having to cut and, pr and process your piece right out of the gate. You could create charcuterie boards without having, cutting handles, you can create wood blanks for wood turning. So really, what are the disadvantages? Well, there are disadvantages, so let's talk about those now. All right, so those disadvantages, there aren't many of them, but there are some, and we should definitely talk about them. The one big thing with silicone molds is to, in, in, to make them last long and to prevent epoxy resin from sticking to that silicone, you always want to use something called a mold release. So a mold release is a spray just like this and you spray it on before every single use. What happens if you don't use a mold release? Well, bad things happen. One, the silicone mold starts getting eaten by the epoxy resin, which is really harsh, um, both in terms of chemically harsh and of course that heat generated by the resin. It actually starts to get brittle um, if you don't use a proper mold release. And you need to use the proper mold release. There is a video in this series just on mold releases. Um, but real quick here, uh, one of these mold releases are perfect. These are non-silicone based mold releases, which means they're not made of silicone. You don't want to spray silicone onto silicone because it's not going to do anything. You need something like this, a non-silicone based mold release. So that's a clear disadvantage is that you do need a mold release to, to get that uh, mold lasting longer and to prevent resin from accidentally sticking to the mold. Um, but with that said, let's talk about longevity. Silicone molds do not last forever, okay? There are probably some people that don't understand that, but a silicone mold has a limited life. And what you do with that mold is what is going to determine how long it actually is functional, how long you can use it for. It's library life, as they say. So if you're using polyurethane resin or maybe you're using concrete, those molds are, or, or jesmonite or something like that, those molds are going to last longer than using something with like epoxy resin, which is way harsher on silicone. But in general, if you are using the correct mold release and you are taking care of that mold um, and you're storing that mold, cleaning that mold, you should be able to get 20, maybe even 30 actual uses out of one of these molds, a high quality silicone mold like this before it starts to fail. When it starts to fail, the inside's gonna get brittle, it's gonna start to peel away and chunks are gonna start to come out of it. That's when you're gonna know it's time to go to a different mold or, or replace the one you've got. Um, and it's just a fact of life. I mean, silicone molds are not gonna last forever. If someone's telling you, who, who, if someone's selling these molds is telling you, oh, their molds are good for 80 uses or 100 uses, that's nonsense. Don't believe them. We've been doing this for years. I've been making silicone molds before there was even wood and resin and river tables. Like back in the day, I was making silicone molds for our haunted house and Halloween applications. They don't last forever. It is what it is. Okay. So that's a clear disadvantage. Now, with that said, that should also explain why we only offer molds up to a certain size. If you have a mold that is only good for 20 or 30 uses, you have to amortize that cost over your project. So if you've got a mold that costs $200 and it's good for 20 uses, that means every single use is effectively costing you $10. However, the larger the mold, the larger the cost. Here is one of our, oh my God, 
weighs a, it weighs a bit. I don't even know if it's going to fit in the full frame. This is a 36 by 24 by two inch silicone mold. It is the biggest mold we offer. It is the heaviest mold we offer. And right now it's the most expensive mold we offer, which brings you to the other thing is that cost of these things in this size gets extreme. So a 36 by 24 right now, I believe this molds around 650 US dollars. Compare that to a comparable size HDP mold, 150 to 200 dollars you can see that these silicone molds are much much more expensive and that's why we don't make them ginormous we have people asking us all the time can you make a 48 by 24 can you make a 5 by 8 can you make a 4 by 8 no because that mold is going to be thousand two thousand dollars and you're only going to get 20 maybe 30 uses out of it so you're effectively going to be paying a hundred dollars per time you use that which you then have to add to your project cost so that is silicone's obvious disadvantage. It's cost and it's function of uh, cost to number of uses, which has to be considered. However, in most cases where a lot of our molds are making charcuterie boards and things like that, charcuterie board mold might cost you 150 to 200 dollars, let's say, and you can get 20 to 30 uses out of it. That's a pretty good investment for the amount of time saved, demolding, setting up, the amount of wood saved compared to say using a tuck tape, uh, tuck tape and wood mold and the amount of uh, pre-forming after save. So for example, if you're using one of our charcuterie board molds and you're using one of, uh, compared to, you know, getting a piece out of a square mold where you have to physically cut that handle out, sand it, router it, shape it, whatever. Whereas our charcuterie board molds, you pull the piece out with a handle already intact. That's saving you time and that's worth something. Time's worth something. So I think that's what you have to really wrap your head around is that these silicone molds are really easy to use. They're going to save you time, which means they're going to save you money in that respect. But they're also going to have a limited life. And if you don't treat them right and you don't use the right mold release, you're going to break them. And that's going to be a costly mistake. But with that said, whatever you could possibly dream of, we probably have a mold for that. Case in point here, you want to make a long board, which is basically like a type of skateboard. We have a mold for that. We have long board molds. We have molds to make giant dog tags. We have molds to make charcuterie boards. We have molds to make cylinders. We have, you know, molds to make, again, the charcuterie boards with the, with the handles. We have crosses. We have, you know, we've got a, a mold for nearly any application. So if you're going to be, if you want to really stoke your creativity and you're a resin artist or you work with wood and resin, you definitely want to head over to craftelements.com and check out the molds and, temp and matching templates for those. So I'm going to demonstrate a quick and dirty way to build a mold uh, simply using plywood and tuck tape. Uh, you'll also need silicone uh, to seal the mold and some sort of screws or nails or finishing nails to assemble it all. But I just want to demonstrate how easy these are to make if you wanted to go this route and make a really simple cruel mold box. You can use uh, well, plywood, you could use melamine. The key is that we're going to coat it in this tuck tape. And this method applies whether you're making a giant mold for a tabletop, you could make an eight foot, four foot, or even longer uh, mold this way. Or in this case, we're just going to make a tiny one for demonstration. So the first thing you're going to want to do is determine the final size of your product or the final size of your mold. So you're going to want to make sure you have enough material, of course, to make your box. You're going to need the bottom of the box and you're going to need the size of the box keeping in mind that depending on how you attach the sides, it's going to change the size of the bottom panel. So if you're attaching the sides onto the top of the bottom panel, you're going to want to account for the thickness of the wood um, on the perimeter and make that bottom panel bigger. If you're going to attach the sides like this um, and butt them up against the perimeter of the actual bottom panel, then that's fine. Make the bottom panel the size of your mold. Um, but then you're going to have to make the sides a little bit taller to account for the thickness of the bottom panel, if that makes sense. So in this case, I'm just going to make um, a bottom panel and then I'm going to attach the sides around the perimeter and butt them up against that. So let's get started. I've determined that I want to have uh, a mold that I can pour two inches in. This material is three quarter inch thick, which means I'm going to be doing the perimeter uh, sidewalls two and three quarter inch because I'm going to attach the walls along the side of the mold. I'm going to go to my saw, measure out two and roughly two and three quarter inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to cut the walls first. With my long side walls. With my short side walls. 
we're going to quickly determine how much we need to take off of the longer side walls because we obviously we could leave them like that but for the sake of making it look somewhat pretty let's just trim them up the correct size and again reinforcing the idea that if you wanted to mount your walls on top you wouldn't need to add the additional thickness to the height of this but you would do need to add the thickness of this material to the to the actual dimensions of your final board because you would effectively be mounting those panels over here right and again that's dependent on if you actually care about a final size of your mold if you're just making something general and doesn't really matter it's approximate the measurements don't matter so much all right next thing we're going to do is we are going to tuck tape tuck tape is also known as sheathing tape and this is the tape that's used for um, putting up uh, insulative uh, plastic on walls and stuff right so it's really easy um, flatter the better and then we're going to overlap it just a little bit sidewalls you'll notice I didn't put any tape there it makes no difference if you want to put tape there I'm mounting it like this so the tape's actually not needed there if I was mounting it like this you'd want to obviously cover the entire panel in tape and we're going to lay this down overlapping just a little bit you know, like an eighth of an inch maybe most a quarter inch because the last thing you want is a gap there where the resin is going to bond to your wood and then make it really difficult to uh, detach. And again, if you haven't picked up on it, the reason we're using tuck tape is because resin will not stick to this stuff. It comes right off. It's very much like silicone or HDP in that, in that uh, sense is that you really don't have to worry about the resin sticking. And again, reinforcing the idea that I'm making a tiny one, but if you're making um, a, a big tabletop, this is how you're going to do it as well. Um, if you're not going to use a pre-made mold, you can definitely just make a giant version of this with taller sides. All right, so we've come down, got all that. Next thing we're going to do is attach our sides. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we're going to seal them. Some people will only seal the inside, as in like putting a bead of caulking here. When I put when I put these together, or at least years ago when I used to do it this way, um, I put some caulking in here first and then attach it to the side to fully seal it. You can use acrylic caulk or you can use um, pure silicone. Priest, put a bead there. And I'm gonna fit that there. Now, actually affixing this here, if you want to reuse this, by the way, you can actually reuse this, but not very many times. You'll probably get two uses out of it before the thing falls apart, becomes useless. Um, so it's completely up to you if you wanna make this reusable. If you wanna make it reusable, use screws, not nails. Um, I don't care, I'm, not, I'm really just doing this for a demonstration for you. Um, so I'm just gonna put it together quickly with my brad nailer. Um, and then once you actually need to demold it, you're just gonna you know, bang the sides off and it's garbage after that. Um, it's up to you how you want to make it. Screws, nails, um, removable uh, fittings, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as it sticks together and as long as it's sealed. stapled together. Now you'll see that we do have a little bit of gap in here, uh, which is to be expected, uh, especially given the thickness and unevenness of the tape. Uh, I've already put silicone in uh, on the actual panels before I attach them, but the last thing you probably want to do is this. Just a really small bead, like that. And then just go over with your finger to get it right into that uh, 
crevice and that's going to be enough to seal up your mold so it doesn't leak. Um, if you're watching this, you probably say, well, this is pretty annoying. And that's the, that's the idea. That's why we sell uh, silicone and HDP molds that are reusable. So you don't have to do this every time. You don't have to worry about leaky silicone, rather leaky resin and making these forms. But yeah, that's how you make one of these forms. So I truly hope this demonstrates what I talked about in the beginning of this video. There is no best mold. If you're making a giant tabletop, Sorry, we can't help you. And our silicone molds are not the best because they're gonna be very expensive in a giant size, which is gonna cost you X amount of dollars per use. And they're just unreasonable uh, in, in terms of having something that big, that heavy, uh, when you could make something yourself out of wooden tuck tape or say out of HTP plastic and get the same thing done. Whereas, you know, if you're a resin artist and you want to make a cylinder, for example, this is going to be the best way to do it. This is going to be the best for that application. It's going to be really easy to pour your resin. It's going to be easy to get it out and you're not going to have to worry about it. You're going to have a really nice piece right out of the gate. So in that, in terms of that, this mold is great. It's maybe even the best mold for that application. So really, I hope I really drilled home uh, the different types of molds, the different options that you have, the different cost options going from something that you're going to make yourself out of wooden tuck tape all the way up to our big silicone molds or even an HDP mold. If you're making, you know, big charcuterie boards or small tabletops, we definitely have something for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you've missed the rest of our resin and wood basic series, I highly suggest you check that out because we really do go over every single component of making these projects, getting them, uh, getting the wood, getting the resin, which type of resin to choose, which type of molds to choose. We go over all that in a module based series here on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed to us, make sure you do that now. Just hit that subscribe and like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and as always, happy making. Wait, you made it all the way to the end of this video, which means you get an exclusive 10% discount on anything from craftelements.com or totalboat.com. All you need to do is enter coupon code ERWBVS at checkout. That's ERWBVS. This coupon code is going to get you an instant 10% discount on any of the time-saving molds, templates, or tools at craftelements.com. Or head over to totalboat.com and use the code to get some amazing epoxy resin at a 10% discount.